Hey, this is Ryan. I'm building a uh, protein skimmer and thought I'd tell the world about it. Um, so what I'm doing here, I have a friend that owns a large saltwater, not aquarium, but actually a place where people can go scuba dive. The only problem is, as cool as it is, it's got tons of tropical fish, a couple of nurse sharks, stingrays, the visibility frankly sucks. So last couple of weeks I've been scouring the internet, learning about protein skimmer design, and I've found all kinds of stuff and just thought I'd share what I found. So um, first things first, uh, there's quite a bit that goes into the design. The basic principle, you want to put bubbles in the water, keep them there as long as you can, and then let them come out and create a foam head which then spills over. The uh, protein and other organic material gets stuck at the bubble surface and it strips it out of the water. So this is my design and maybe I'll put this up on a computer where you can see it a little bit better. But the basic gist is water is going to come in the two inch pipe on the left hand side, it goes through a venturi valve which creates bubbles and then down through a downdraft tube. The idea being that you can control the flow of the water in these tubes with the bypass valve such that the water goes down just slightly faster than the speed the bubbles are trying to come up. You can then maximize the time that the bubbles are in the tube. Um, once they come through there, they go up through a larger tube and you get a foam head in here. There's a valve down here as in a typical skimmer on an aquarium that you can open and close to change the water level in there and the skim it would come out of the top. Start by giving you a little bit of a tour. At a large construction site I found a fairly good sized piece of 12 inch PVC. This is the kind that's used for sewage drains. Um, the one end of it had been muffed up pretty badly and it was there in the trash pile. Pretty expensive piece of uh, pipe but that's going to serve as the backbone for the main reaction chamber. Over here as you can see I've already started to piece together components uh, from the local hardware store. Most of this uh, section you see here is 4 inch schedule 40 and then the other components that you have here are all 2 inch. Uh, the facility is between 2 and 3 million gallons of water and right now I think we're pumping about 450 gallons um, per hour out there so it would take some time to cycle through it but I've designed this to be able to scale up a little bit as we get bigger. Uh, one thing I will point out, right here in the middle of the setup, this is a Venturi injector. This one here is only three quarters of an inch, but with the pipes being so much larger, uh, the idea is to potentially put a two inch injector there uh, once we get up and running if, if we want to splurge on a more expensive injector. One of the other things I will make note of is that this is a 4 inch ABS pipe. That is not for the final design. It will actually be replaced with a 4 inch transparent PVC. The idea being that the Venturi valve upstream is going to produce a massive amount of bubbles. We want to have the viewing port to be able to see how effective it is as we make tweaks. Which brings me to this component over here, a good old trusty um, pressure gauge. Reason being is uh, you want to be able to change your settings um, not just on the pressure, airflow, uh, water current to maximize the amount of oxygen or air being injected into the uh, stream. Two other items we had to pick up locally. Uh, this one is a four and a half inch hole saw and this one two and three eighths. Uh, why two and three eighths? The fact is this pipe over here is going to need some ports drilled into it and then we will be welding these pipes in. I did look at using uh, uniseals and bulkheads. The concern with bulkheads uh, is when you look at the curvature, you put a bulkhead on this, it's not going to seal very well. Uniseals may work a little bit better, but given the volume and the size of this, uh, that we're working with PVC as I started doing my research, I uh, learned a little bit more about welding PVC and the idea here is we're going to build it right into the pipe for a more durable solution. Um, that's the basic design. I'm going to pull the camera off of the tripod right here, just toss this down, and walk you around to show you a couple of things I've got going on as far as actually constructing it. So, first of all, this right here is my 
main reaction chamber where the bubbles will be. I uh, basically picked that up in a scrap yard where one end had been crunched. Uh, otherwise it's a fairly expensive piece of pipe. Over here you can see where I've started piecing together the components for the main updraft tube. That's 4 inch PVC, a uh, clear tube you can get for about 20 or 30 bucks for a 2 foot section of it. And then same price about on the 2 inch actually, ironically. I've got a number of valves, a couple things still need to be picked up here. Um, out here you can see the actual apparatus where I've started to piece it together. Uh, the 3 8 inch PVC has just been welded to the main pipe and uh, not terribly difficult. You just got to take your time, put it together. One of the most challenging parts is how to cut a hole that big and that perfectly round in that flat sheet. What I ended up doing, and I'll bring you over here to show this to you, is I first cut a hole in the pipe. As you can see right here, where I cut in with, uh, this is a four and a half inch hole saw. Cut in there, then I used a sawzall to cut that hole out. Now the problem was getting it perfectly round so that the solvent welding would work properly. What I did there is I cut a piece out of the section of the sidewall and just drilled a little holder to keep the sandpaper on there. But before I started with that, I actually used this to get it as rough as I could and then that for the fine sanding to bring it into the shape I need. So it worked pretty well. We have the main tube coming together and uh, I will update you a little bit later once I start getting all the pieces put back on it.